All right. So, praise God. Are we ready for the word of God today? So, um, I just want to speak into some things. Three things I think, three things I believe everyone should pray about when they want to do a new business. Three things. So, I wanted to look at it from the word of God. And um, I want you to, you know, three things I think everybody should pray about when they want to do, you know, a new business. Can you turn your Bibles to the book of John? Three things. So, so what I'm saying so is that when people want to do business, they, you know, they're wondering what to do and exactly what to say. Maybe, maybe you're here, you're already doing your business and you want to venture into another one. Or maybe you're here, you're thinking of starting a new business. How exactly do I process this spiritually? And someone says, why is it even important to pray? And I always say this to people. Um, for all of you watching online, the economy statistics in your country might be very strong. But in our own country here, there are variables that need prayer. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Yeah, there are variables that need prayer. There are variables that need prayer. So I'm going to show you these things just briefly. So the Bible says this in John chapter 2 verse 1. And in the third day when there was a marriage in the kingdom of Galilee, the mother of Jesus was come, and both Jesus was called and his mother to and his disciples to the marriage. Verse 3 says, And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus said unto him, They have no wine, he said unto Jesus. And Jesus said unto her, Woman, what have I to do with you? My hour has not yet come. The first thing you have to pray about when you want to start a business is this. Is this the timing for it? There's nothing as frustrating as putting out an idea before it is time. I'm telling you, you will do everything that is right and it will not work. And it will not work not because it's a bad idea. It will not work just because the time is not right. I was reading something about in the technology space and they were talking about some technology product that came out before the computers became very conversant you know, and how the technology product struggled. So they were doing an analysis. And they said, the reason why they struggled, the product struggled was because the product just came just ahead of its time. That the infrastructure that will make the product come. For example, just imagine if we didn't have telephones in Nigeria, a lot of the e-commerce business will never work. So the only reason why the e-commerce business work is because that happened. So one of the things you have to begin to pray is this is that this thing am I doing is at the time. Just imagine Jesus Christ. Jesus was humble enough to tell his mom. He said, man, my hour has not come. So I know you have a great idea. I know that you're thinking about something, but Lord, is this the timing for it? The second thing I, want, I would love you to pray about is this. The second thing I would love to pray about is this. It's in the book. Let me just... Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 5. This is God speaking to Moses. He says this. So the first prayer is this. Lord, this thing I'm doing, is this the timing? And let me say something. That, let me say whatever. Look up here. The Bible says in his time, it makes everything what? That means if it's outside his time, it will be ugly. So there are people that have great ideas. And, and that's why, you know, when I talk to singles that are married, because all the singles, you know, they say, I'm delayed. I said, how do you know you're delayed if you don't know the time you're meant to be married? A single cannot say I'm delayed if you don't know the The, the concept of delay means you, you are aware of the timing. Yes or no? So if I say you came late to church, it's because church starts at what? At a certain time. But if church is all day and you can come anytime, anytime you show up cannot be late. Yes or no? Exactly. So, if you say you are delayed in marriage, that means you've seen the agenda of God for your life. And you understand by divine perspective that you should be married by now. Not that you've seen your friends and neighbors married. And you're not saying that because we are age mates, we should be married. So, the first thing is to really pray and say, Lord, this thing is this the timing for us. And someone says, how will God answer you? Sometimes the answer is going to come from a supernatural means. Sometimes the answer is going to come from you're going to try things and you're going to pull back. Glory to God. The second thing you must see is this. I mean, just, just like Jesus. You know, as much as Jesus went to come, before he comes, John the Baptist must come. They're just arrangement in the Spirit. Because the Bible says, John the Baptist must announce the coming of Jesus Christ. 
So the second thing you want to pray about as a startup is, and next week, next week during the first service, we will pray a lot about this. So we'll be praying, and I'm teaching it so that you can, you know, I teach it so that you can know how to pray it. So the teaching brings you faith and direction. The prayer now and necessary supernatural to begin to direct in your, in your favor. So the second thing you want to pray about it is Hebrews chapter 8 verse 5. The Bible says that we'll serve unto them an example and a shadow of heavenly things. As Moses was admonished of God when he was about to make the tabernacle. What did he say? He says, to, this is what God told Moses when he was about to make the tabernacle. He says, to make, he says see, see, say the Lord that thou make all things according to the pattern that was shown unto thee in the mountain. What are you praying about here? You are saying, Lord, give me the direction exactly how to build. So I'm going into oil and gas. I'm going into food. I'm going into tech. I'm going into, I'm traveling about, give me the direction. He told him, he says, see that you build. It's not just enough to start or build a business. You need to build according to pattern. There must be direction there. So, I'm going into real estate. Is my lot marketing, selling estates? Or is my lot building? In building, am I building from the scratch or I'm doing joint ventures? Because most people get into the right thing, but because there is no clear direction, then they begin to run helter skelter. And this is something you must, by yourself, get up in the evening, get up in the morning, and begin to pray. Let me give an example, and I'll use a ministry example. Everybody knows that God's will is that you, everybody will, the gospel will spread. But the Bible says that God was, um, that Paul was going into, I think, Bethania. It was a city in Asia, Bethania. The Bible says, and the Holy Ghost forbid him. As he was going, the Holy Ghost pulled him back. But it's the will of God. It's the general will of God that that should happen. As the Holy Ghost pulled him back, days after he had a dream, in a dream, he said he saw a man in, in Tassos. In, is it Tassos? It's Barcelona, in Barcelona. He saw a man in Barcelona saying, come over to Barcelona and help us. What does that mean? He was meant to go here. So he eventually went to Macedonia. As he entered to Macedonia, a river broke out. God knows the easiest way to start the business. Yes, sir. Guess what? When he finished Macedonia, sometime later, he eventually went back to Bethania. The Bible says, as a matter of fact, they told him that the city was turned upside down. But sometimes, that is not the timing, that is not the direction. Listen to me, you can't force God to do today what he wants to do tomorrow. I'm giving you fundament, you can't force God to do today what he wants to do tomorrow. That's what Jesus Christ understood when they told him that Lazarus is dead. What did he say? He said, let's stay. He said, because if I go now, nothing will happen. They say, sir, are you going back there? He says, he that walks in life not stumble. That means if I walk on that direction, I will not stumble. He says, are we going to go back? That's why they want to kill you. He said, you don't understand. That's why I'm not going now. Because the light is not there yet. But when the light shows up, if we begin to walk, he that walks in the light will not stumble. Glory to God. And that's why if you're close to me, sometimes you want to do something. I'll say, let me think about it. And one more than thinking about it. And the truth is that I'm searching my spirit. What is happening? Direction is very powerful. Though. In the book of Luke, there's a man in the Bible called Aeneas. You will not, most of you may not even know him because the Bible just got him for five verses. <laughs> you know that the Bible talk about for two verses, three verses. Aeneas. And God had told Aeneas, there were two characters. There's a woman called Anna. The prophetess, she was old and near before the birth of Jesus Christ. And this and near, God had told him and said that before you die, you will see Jesus Christ. That God had made a personal promise to him. I'm showing you that although God promised you something prophetically, there might be something you have to do. So one day, as Anania was praying, the Bible says God told Anania to go to the temple. That that child will be brought to the temple. If Anania didn't go to the temple that day, he will have missed it. And that's how some people miss the visitation of the Almighty. Blessings is tied to instruction. Instruction is tied to hearing. And, and you know what the beautiful thing of this? The beautiful thing about this is this. This is the beautiful thing. This is why it's a relationship. It's not a formula. 
This is why what? It's not a formula. Glory to God. The third thing you want to pray about as a business person is this, and we're learning from Jesus. If you notice, we're learning this from the New Testament. It says, when Jesus was eventually able to start his ministry, the Bible says he went to the wilderness, fasted and prayed 40 days and 40 nights. When he came out after the temptation, what was the first thing he did? He chose the apostles. That shows what he was praying about. Begin to pray for the partnerships that will make your vision come to pass. He went into the, he went into the wilderness 40 days. Many of you want to go into partnership. No, 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 no. You want to put on your body, you don't even pray anything. Jesus Christ, didn't you see the Bible? When they were going to ordain the seven men, he said, let's go and fast and pray. Every time they want to ordain, let's fast and pray. They are ordaining not demon-possessed people, though. They are ordaining ministers, people in ministry. They say, let's fast and pray. You, you are in the business world where shark eat shark. You work with people that are demon-possessed. You want to pick them. You don't even do you fast and pray. So the third thing you, when you want to start a business, the third thing you pray for, is the partnerships. Praise God. So next week, Sunday, we will spend time. Um, has this blessed you already? Yes, yeah, this has blessed you already. Good. So throughout this month, we will pray for all the startups. And, you know, I will teach you. Then we'll pray. Because that's the way I really believe effective prayer is. Not just emotional outburst. No, 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 no. It's a Bible thought thing that, cons- that un- it helps your understanding, helps faith. You can bring it out. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So, so I, I just read the Bible. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. The Bible says it came out. The Bible says, give me the scripture. See Mark chapter something. The Bible says he prayed all night. And when he prayed all night, he came to choose the apostles. Just show me the scripture. The Bible says he prayed all night. And when he prayed all night, he came to choose the apostles. Just imagine Jesus Christ. Who should not pray to choose people? You want to start a school, do you have the right partnerships? Has anybody found it? Let me just find it quickly so that it's on the screen. Verse 12. Go to verse 12 first. Uh, if you're the right one, verse 12 will show us. Uh-huh. The Bible said, it came, to pass, it came to pass those days. When he went to the mountain, it continued on. Not that he prayed, though. It continued. That means he's been there before night. He now continued all night in prayer to God. We saw the effect of the prayer in verse 13. When he came out, verse 13, see what the Bible says. And when it was time, he called on to his disciples. And, and you know, he, he called and he chose them to. He called them. There was no need. It was not about CV or recruitment. The spiritual, he has spiritually downloaded what he should download. So when they were submitting CV, he was just CV to the CV to know what he had seen in the spirit. According to the pattern he had seen in the mountain. Because in the spirit he had downloaded first. So what happens is that you will download first in the spirit. And you know, these things are very symbolic. The reason why is that God knows the person that will betray you. God knows the person that will betray you. He knows. Some, and I'm not saying that he will not make you peace and will betray you. No. They all have their portion, like Judas Iscariot. So some people must be picked because they have their part. Because if Judas is not betrayed Jesus Christ, I will pull another people enter. Praise the Lord. All right. Are you blessed already? Yes, Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. First Corinthians chapter 13. So you can just put that somewhere. Message 1. It's not just like, you know, Bible study, you know. Many of you want us to pray now. We will pray. First Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. And the, the teaching is, can God have his way? Of course, the primary thing we've been speaking about, um, we want to speak about this, this month, we said last month, his devotion to God. That's what we're talking about, devotion to God. Devotion to God. How do I know, and this is very important, when people start growing in the things of Christ, one of the key things they want to ask themselves is this. How do I know if I'm growing as a Christian? Is it that I'm attending church more? Is it that I'm praying more? 
He said that I can quote Bible like a parrot. He said that I'm going through the hierarchy in church. You can have all those things happen in your life and not be experiencing genuine spiritual growth. The Bible is very clear about the spiritual growth template. It's very clear. Spiritual growth template is very clear. Let me show you quickly. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 11. This is what the Bible says. He says, Paul says this. He said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. What does this mean? Spiritual growth and maturity reflect in perspective and values. He didn't say, when I grew spiritually, I prayed more. Or I knew more. See what he said. He said, this is how you know I've grown. He said, when I was a child, I spake as a child. When you listen to a child talk about the things of the Spirit, you can hear childishness how they talk. When they talk about the things of prayer, you can hear childishness in what they say. You can understand. You can understand it. But when they start growing, they are talking about the same topic, but the depth and the perspective they are talking from differs. And the reason why is that they've grown. Something you can never hear me say again in my life. I used to say it before, God, why me? That's the language of a child. When you are grown, you understand that attack is the signal of what value. So when something happens to you, you say, God, God, why me? He doesn't talk like that. See, when you, when you, this is the death in the things of the Spirit. When you're a child, something happens to you. You know, um, my gunshots and the gunshot experience I had. Someone said, all about the Satan. I'm like, why do you want to make this? Why do you want me to be Satan famous? I said, you don't understand. Every time there's an attack, there's only an attack because something valuable is there. Yes or no? Every time thief comes to a place, do they come to a place where there's nothing? Exactly. So, the attack on your life is a proof that you carry value. The attack on your marriage, the attack on your womb, the attack on your job is a proof that you carry value. But that perspective is not the perspective of children. It's another level of spiritual maturity. Because, you don't understand, when Paul had a problem, the Bible says Paul calls it the turn of the flesh. He was praying and praying and praying. And this is how you grow spiritually. He was praying that God would take it away from him. And God eventually told him, my grace is sufficient for the yes or no. What people really think is that God meant that Paul keeps suffering. No, I've given you grace. That's not what he meant. Remember that grace is ability. So when he said, my grace is sufficient for you, what he was saying to you is that Paul, don't pray for me to remove it. You have ability. Deal with it yourself. What does that mean? When you grow as a child, when you grow, when you come across a loss or a setback, you stop asking yourself, this and this. No, no, you're like, thank you, Jesus. There's no temptation that is not common to man. It says, number one, this is common. Number two, there's no temptation that comes to you that is above your capacity. So, this loss, I made to a 200 million dollar loss, is because I can handle it. I don't know what happened to my wife or my husband. She stepped me to infidelity. I don't know what happened. It's because I can handle it. And from that place, you begin to deal with it. You don't say, I'm finished. My marriage is ruined. How could he do like this? How could she do like that? That's how a bit talks. When you're grown, you understand. Nothing comes to you that does not equates the capacity on the inside. Are you hearing me? Let me show you Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. Let me show you some of these things. Hebrews chapter 11. Verse 24. The Bible says by faith, Hebrews 11 verse 24, Moses, when he was come to age, when he was come to maturity, refused. Ah, uh, yeah. See, that's what I'm going to When you come to maturity, there are things you refuse. It's not as if they're not okay, oh, but I've gone beyond that level. You know, some of you, they have to be encouraging about Bible study. About You know, some of you, they say, um, 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 they say we should be confessing, confessing. What should we be confessing? You have not come to maturity yet. 
But if you come to maturity, it's not like confession. It's the way we talk. It's our profession of faith. I'm a new creation in Christ Jesus. No, I'm not the one that is cursed. I've been redeemed. Oh, glory to God. I've been redeemed from the work of darkness. I've been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's son. I'm not a lucky person. I'm a blessed person. Lucky is a probability that vary from time to time. Blessed is a state of being. Glory to God. You know, I, I hear some people say, I, I, uh, so someone say, I'm favored. Something happened, I'm favored. Listen to me. If you use one or two incidents to describe the fact that you are favored, you are not favored. What you have is breakthrough. Favor is a state. What about is a state? Continually, the evidence of favor showing your life. It, it can be so confusing that you will start taking it for granted. Look at Joseph. Potiphar's house, best. Prison, best. Palace, best. You could see. So, it was not just having a one-time experience. It was a flow. You need to dif differentiate experiences and states. I can make 10 million, but I'm not wealthy. But I'm godly means I have 10 million. See what the Bible says about Moses. He says, and Moses, when he was come of age, he refused to be called. And I'm saying so because, listen to me, if you're a Christian, there are things when you grow in your Christianity, you must refuse. And say, this is not the way I talk. This is not the way I think. And you know, it's just sometimes you don't even understand this thing. How can you be a born again Christian a whole week you don't pray and read the Bible? See, as a Christian, the value you have for the word. This, <laughs> this book now is a new book. I'm telling you, I just opened. You see, me that I teach you, I'm always writing. But you write nothing. And part time, there are almost about seven notebooks. The books, because as I'm in my personal back quiet time, I'm writing the things I'm learning. I'm saying, my God, this is so powerful. It's the value for the word. It's the value. It's the personal value for the word. That you know, your children must know that when daddy studies Bible, it's a serious thing. Glory to God. So the Bible says this. He says... By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. Why? Chosen rather to suffer affliction. And that's what I'm going to. In your journey of faith, in case you want me to lie to you, let me lie. So you go home happy. But if you want to tell the truth, in your journey of faith, there will be affliction. No? There will be times you will just say, I don't understand what is happening again. But that's where your faith grows. Where you can trust him, where you don't see. The strongest faith is built in the worst times. The strongest faith is built in difficult times. <laughs> Glory to God. You see what the Bible says. It says, "Choosing rather to suffer affliction." With the this is the this is how mature people see it. They don't say, hey, "I'm running away from." No, no, no. He chose to suffer affliction with the people of God than to why than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for what a season one guy came to meet me in our church he said pastor i wanted to pray for me i have the governor on down if i call him he will pick up the phone he said there's someone that i i said something two weeks ago i have this thing before the lagos state government i don't want the governor to know so that he will not interfere i want god to do it himself the reason why is this he said i want to have my testimony that man did not help me, that God helped me. I say, my God, these are people that have tossed, they've touched the coal of heaven. You can tell. Their first response is not man, their first response is God. He said, I don't want anybody to be able to say that I did this. No, no, no. I said, I want to be able to say God did it. The same thing with Moses. When you become spiritual, your thrust in the, in the things of the flesh will begin to fizzle. It's not as if you don't understand those things are there. But you understand that your trust is in God and those things are channels. I, I want to say to everyone here, when you get back home today, go to the Harvest TV on YouTube and watch the message I preach on prayer on Wednesday. The importance and practice of constant prayer. It's one of the biggest things that will help you understand the power of process. 
they will be encouraging you, um, um, let's fast. They will encourage you, let's do, um, um, let's fast. If they, if they don't encourage you, let's fast. They will encourage you to say, let's pay tight, let's give offering. Or let's, why are they encouraging you? Did, did you hear the testimony we just shared before the service? How do you believe that a lady, a, this, is, this is not serious, watch the video before the service, before I came up. A lady at her age had the fallopian tube removed because it was damaged. In fact, they were telling me that pastor, she didn't finish her testimony when she began to cry. We prayed, she went back to the hospital. She went back to Premier, one of the best hospitals in Nigeria. Checked, the fallopian tube was there. Doctor said, they could have not removed your tube. The lady said, pulled up her top. He said, doctor, this is the sign where they cut me. What did they cut and put out here? She went back to the hospital where they removed it. They brought out her file. They said, no, we removed it, it's on file. He said, but it's back there. Everybody became confused. What I'm saying to you is that everybody needs that kind of experience that makes you know that God is not a book. Glory to God. So the way you know you're growing is that spiritual growth begins to affect your perspective. It shows in your value. It shows in what you're saying. But the question now is this. This is where, where we're going to during this teaching because we've looked at why. So one of the things that you do when you're growing is service. That's one of the key things, is service. But the question is that, why does God ask us to serve? This was a big question for me. I, I, who is not busy here? Raise up your hands. If you are not busy in your life, raise up your hands. That you just have free time. I, I, can, need, I, can, need, I need your help. Okay, sister, see me after the service. I can give you some job, praise God. But the average person here is busy. So if the average person is busy with child, with family, with work, with life, why does God now say serve? Does, is he blind? Because my God is good and kind. How can he know I'm so busy with the demands of life and say serve? It was, it was a challenge to me. But the, until he began to explain to me. The first thing is this. <laughs> Why does God want us to serve? Number one, service shows the state of our heart. To ourselves and to God. You know, Every time you relate with God and you are collecting something and you are demanding something, the state of your heart is not there. For example, now that there's politics, you know, when someone is a governor, you don't know who is his friend or not. Yes or no? Because, you see, they are all my friends, they serve me. We don't know who is your friend. It's when you step out of office and there's nothing to collect from you, but there's something to collect from us, we will know who is serving who. And you know what the Bible says? <laughs> You know, service reflects the state of our heart. Look at the rich young ruler. He came to Jesus Christ. He said, Jesus Christ said, he says, from when I was young, I've obeyed all the laws. I've done this. I've done this. I've done this. And Jesus Christ said, oh, that's great. Go and tell all you have and come back. The man couldn't come back. Because all of a sudden, the state of his heart showed. God uses service to reveal the state of your heart to you. You can pray. When your child is sick, but can you pray for the salvation of the world? God uses service to show you. And, and let me say something to you that's very powerful here. Heart issues are difficult to identify. When people have things that are internal, they are very difficult to identify. Because they're inside. I, I love the way this is said. That the, 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 the heart of the problem is a problem of the heart. The heart of the problem is to follow that. The God needs to put you situation where heart issues come out. One of the places where it comes out is marriage. That's where you really know that you're selfish. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So, so look, look, at, look at Gehazi. We, when you saw Gehazi with Elisha, you thought he was a Jesus lover because he will cry, raise up the hands. You know, all we knew was that the mantle, the rod doesn't work in Gehazi's hand. But we could not tell why. Oh my God. All we knew was that the rod didn't work in Gehazi's hand. We could not tell why. He will go and touch. Touch. Bam. He didn't work. Come back to Elijah. Elijah said, ah, go and touch again. He will go and touch. Bam. The reason why is that rod works with hearts. Until Elijah came, Elisha came, the miracle never happened because the heart was disconnected. We eventually saw it. 
All Gehazi was after was money. So all the rich people that came for prayers, Gehazi was picking them out and ministering to them specially. But one day, Gehazi was tested. His heart showed that he was after money than after service. The question is this. If God tests your heart and he has, not that he will, he has. Test is a daily thing with God. Where is your heart? And you know what? With God, motive and heart matters than action. Oh my God. With God, motive and heart matters more than action. God is watching for it. So, in fact, he told someone in First Samuel, he says, I'm, <laughs> he told, let's put it on the screen, First Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. First Samuel chapter 16, verse 7. See what he said here. He said, motive matters to God. See what he said. He said, sis, and the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on the outward countenance. He said, don't look for how they look beautiful. He said, what do I look for? He says, he says for see it, for the Lord see it not as man see it. Man sees the one that is jumping and shouting. He says, how God does see? He says, for, for man looks on the outward appearance. He says, God looks for the inward appearance. Service shows the state of your heart. What is service? Living your life for God on purpose. I want to ask you, when you see all these ushers that serve in church, what do they gain? They have to buy costume. They have to attend many hours. Why? It's a hard thing. Once your heart is not there, you will do it for one month and you will drop it. When you see people that say that my job is to be praying for revival of the gospel in Pakistan where they don't have family, you will ask, what do you gain? Is the co You know why? People that serve knows that this people that serve God knows this is what they know. What breaks the heart of God must break my heart. What break my heart? I, I, there's a song like that. It says, break my heart with what breaks yours. Everything for the kingdom cause. They're so concerned. They're so concerned about things that break the heart of God. Because the question is this. And that's why service is powerful. Because service touches hearts. The question is this. Where's your heart? You know... I want to ask you, how many of you have colleagues and friends that you have never invited to church? Ask them to join NLP. How many have them? And the reason why is this. What's my business? Have you seen them how God sees them? God is troubled that this guy has a failed marriage. God is troubled that this guy feels so lonely. God is troubled that this guy struggles with having no child. And God is saying, how can I touch him? That's how God sees them. Human beings see them as my big God, God that has money. That's not how God sees them. God sees the money and sees the empty soul. The one that serves says, I see how God sees. I see the empty soul. So why, do, why is service important to God? Because service reveals our heart. Is that not what happened to Abraham? God told him, he said, bring your son. Did he want to kill Isaac? No! He wanted to see what the state of Isaac's heart is. You, your Isaac may not be a child. Your Isaac may be your time. And God says, give me your time. Can he have it? And God says, midweek service, can he have it? And God says, I want you to give me your resources in offerings and tithing, can he have it? And God says, I want you to lead something, can he have it? And that's your Isaac. And you say, God, but you know I'm very busy. But God says, the reason I'm asking you for this is this. I want to know where your heart is. I love when it rains on, on a Sunday morning. You know why? You see the heart. You have environmental inducement to stay at home. But you can say, Come rain, come sunshine. I serve Jesus. Someone says it rained. When it rained, don't you go to work? Service. The question is this. Where's your heart? And God is saying, I'm checking. So if, if, if they told the single girls, if you join Ushrin, you'll find a husband. Oh, praise God. Oh. Let's go and join our street. If they told the men, if you join greater, you will find connection for business. Oh, praise God. But if God says, just join because of me, that's not enough. 
If I told them in the cell meeting last week, people did deals of two billion naira, three billion. He said, huh? In the cell? Which cell? <laughs> what am I looking for? But is it not enough to just know I'm doing it because I love Jesus and because he first loved me? Where's the state of your heart? Is it not enough to be like, I need the soul, leave my house fellowship? Not because of anything, because I love Jesus. I pray and share the gospel, not because of anything, because I love Jesus. Let's stand up and pray.